So in the second kinetics lab, we're going to look at the temperature and changing the temperature and see how that affects the rate. Um, in general, if you increase the temperature, the, the rate should increase as well. The reaction happens a little bit faster um, because the molecules are able to find each other more quickly. They're moving around more. They're going to collide more often. K, the rate constant, is temperature dependent. So if you change the temperature, the, the, the rate constant will also change. Um, so molecules, we said molecules have to collide in order to have a reaction. Um, they need to collide with the right orientation and they have to have enough energy to cause the bonds to break and form. So in this picture you can see when the two green ends of, of each of these molecules collide, that's an effective collision. And then you get a new, um, you need a new molecule happening there. If the red molecule, or if the molecule collides on the red end instead of the green, like if this thing is just flipped around, um, there isn't a reaction that happens. That's not the part that uh, will cause the reaction. So the more often that they interact, the more often they collide, the more likely um, you'll, you'll have collisions that are effective where they have the right orientation, have the right amount of energy. Activation energy is also really important. That's the minimum amount of energy it takes to get the reaction started. So if you imagine playing miniature golf here, um, you can hit the ball and it kind of goes up the hill. If you don't have enough energy to get it over the hill, it'll just keep falling backwards. And that's what it's like to play miniature golf with a three-year-old. So you want to make sure you get the minimum amount of energy, the activation energy there. And if you kind of zoom in on this part here, we can look at this reaction coordinate diagram where you have reactants over here, you have products over there, and you have a transition state or an activated complex right at the peak here. So this is... Um, a rearrangement and isomerization mechanism here. Um, you can see where this blue piece is being flipped around. So this carbon is attached to the nitrogen and this bond is the bond that's going to break. Right, We're going to break this bond here and we're going to flip this molecule around. So in between that, so if this is your reactant and this is your product, this is your um, activated complex. That happens at the transition state. So this is really high energy compounds, not very stable. You can see it's kind of like halfway in between your reactants and your products. Um, and then you reform this bond over here. So you're breaking this bond, you're breaking that CN bond, you're forming a new CC bond, and you're flipping this molecule around. That's what's happening in this um, reaction. So here's your reactants, and then the peak from the energy, again, plotting energy, which is some kind of reaction progress, um, this is the energy of your reactants, this is the energy of your activated complex, or on the transition state, it's the high point on the graph. The activated complex is what's actually the species there, what does it look like? And then your products are over here, you can see the products are lower in energy. So to calculate the activation energy, you're looking at the difference between here and here, right, in the forward direction. If you're looking at the activation energy in the reverse direction, then you're looking at it from here and here. We can see the reverse direction has a higher activation energy than the forward direction. Activation energy, um, it, it's really important. So the, the higher the activation energy is, um, the slower the reaction is going to be. So the lower the activation energy, the faster the reaction. So we'll do things like we'll add a catalyst to the reaction, which will provide a whole new mechanism, a whole new pathway that has like a lower activation energy. And we'll talk about catalysts at the end. You'll see this diagram again talking about a catalyst. If you have a multi-step process, suppose you have two steps, right? You have you start here with some reactant and then it undergoes some kind of transition state and then it goes again over here before you get your product. So maybe you have two steps in this process. You can look at this activation energy and then you can also look at this activation energy. So activation energy for the first step, activation energy for the second step. And you can kind of you know, figure out which one is going to be, which step will be faster, whichever one has the lower activation energy. So you'll see this in the lab too when we talk about um, a multi-step process. Whoever has the lower activation energy is going to go faster. And so you'll, you'll be able to draw diagrams like this. And you can have as many steps as you want. It just keeps um, going and going. So the lower the activation energy, the faster the reaction. Um, so we said temperature affects the rate. So if you were to plot the fraction of molecules versus the kinetic energy, you can see then we have two different curves here. The blue one is at a lower temperature. The red one's at a higher temperature. At a higher temperature, more molecules have more energy. Uh, more molecules are meeting the minimum amount of activation energy in order to get the reaction to happen. So at a higher temperature, more molecules um, will undergo the reaction. So the reaction will, the rate will be faster at a higher temperature. 
um, don't be scared by these. Um, we're not. We're going to see this in lab, but we're not going to have to. I'll, I'll show you how to use it in one calculation. Um, this is the Arrhenius equation. Arrhenius. We need the, the gas law, the gas constant. Um, this is your your rate constant is a times e to the negative ea over rt. So activation energy. So the rate basically it's saying the rate constant is related to your activation energy as well as the temperature. And this a is just a. Uh, called the frequency factor or the pre-exponential comes before the exponent um, and it represents all everything we've talked about in collision theory so the likelihood that the collisions are going to occur with the proper orientation so it's just kind of like a, a constant there we don't have to worry about that um, you can rearrange that equation you rearrange this equation they take the natural log of both sides to get rid of your exponent and you end up with this equation it's the same one it's just rearranged and this one I like this one better because it's a linear equation so you get y equals mx plus b and so you're gonna plot natural log of a right over here right that's your y-axis and 1 over temperature that is your x-axis make sure your temperatures in Kelvin uh, temperature in Kelvin's it's not going to work in Celsius, so you need to have that temperature in Kelvin, and then uh, your slope is e, negative E A over R, um, and so R is that ideal gas constant. R is 8.314. If you want it in kilojoules, you can do that kilojoules per mole Kelvin. That's fine. Um, activation energy is usually in kilojoules, so you might as well just get the R right into kilojoules, and then there you go. So you can make a graph. If you only have two points, you can use this equation. If you have two um, rate constants at two different temperatures, and uh, you can figure out what the activation energy is. Or so your variables here are: you have k, k1 and k2, and t1 and t2, and then you also have your activation energy. And so if you're given four out of five of these things, you can find the other one. Um, and so we basically just took this equation and, and evaluated it just for two points, just for two, sorry, yeah, for a K and a T. Um, so let's try it. Let's use this equation just so you can see how, how it works on this problem. Again, this was just a homework problem that I added uh, into the notes. Um, so if it's not in your notes, it's, it's one of the homework problems. So the decomposition of ethylene oxide at this temperature is uh, first order with respect to K. Okay, so they give us a K. We say K1 is... 0 0.0120, okay, and that's in minutes negative one, and the temperature that goes with that is 652 Kelvin. All right, and they say, we don't know what the K2 is, that's what we're gonna find, calculate the rate constant when the temperature is 525 Kelvin, but they do give us the activation energy, that's 218, kilojoules per mole and we always know R which is the 8.314 times 10 to the negative 3 I'm just going to put it in kilojoules so it matches the activation energy and now we just have to plug it into plug everything into this equation so we have natural log of k1 which is 0 0.0120 over k2 is EA 218 over 8.314 times 10 to the negative 3 times 1 over T2. This is T1, this is T2. So 525 minus 1 over T1, which is 652. All right, so let's. Yeah, there's an equal sign there. Okay. All right, so I have natural log of 0 0.012. We'll deal with this side later. Let's clean this other side up a little bit. So 218 divided by 8.314. That one first. That's like 26, 20, 1, 9. All right, 262, 19.3. And on the other side, 1 over 525 minus 1 over 652 is 0, 0 0.00037 1. 
And if we simplify that a little bit, multiply those two together, we get 9.7279. And over here, we can split that log up if we want to. Um, natural log of 0 0.0120 minus the natural log of k2. That was a minus the natural log of k2. Um, we end up with natural log of that is negative 4.423 minus the natural log of k2 is 9.7279. Uh, I'm going to add 4.423 on both sides. I get negative natural log of k2 is 14.1502. I'm going to get the negative on the other side and then e to both sides. So I get e to the natural log of k just gives me k. k2 is e to the negative 14 point whatever. I get like 7.15 times 10 to the negative 7 and the units are minutes to the negative one. So it's just a little bit of math in order to, to solve for that, but as long as you have um, four out of five of those things, K1, K2, T1, T2, and activation energy, four out of five you can solve for the, the, the rest of it.